hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for those of you that have just stumbled across uh, this uh, this place my name is Aaron and I like to build uh, things out of junk and this week's build is quite possibly my most technical build uh, yet I managed to get my hands on uh, some different thickness of styrene if nobody knows what styrene is it's a form of plastic it's flat I used to use, well I still do, margarine tubs for uh, plastic sheeting. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a rough sort of shape of an AT-ST from Star Wars. I'm going to cut it out of uh, cardboard first just so I can do the template. Now for the regular viewers you will see that oh, Hang on, Aaron's using a ruler. This must be technical. This is quite literally the most technical I'll get. I don't use any measurements. I'll just sort of eyeball from the picture onto um, onto the cardboard or plastic. And as if by magic, the template appears. So that's just basically gonna be the template that I'm gonna draw onto the styrene and then cut the styrene out. And here is said bad boy styrene. It's one mil thick. Um, so I've never used this thickness before. I've always used, or I've only been able to get really, really thin stuff. So this is gonna be interesting to see um, how, I, uh, how I get used to this. So what I did was um, traced the template onto the styrene and then managed to cut the styrene out uh, and now that means I can go in and just uh, cut out the actual template now. First problem arose and it was basically how long would I make it, what sort of width, does it look alright. So I'm just trying to gauge here um, what size I should make. Um, because from the picture it's kind of difficult to uh, understand so I'm trying to remember uh, from the film how sort of wide it was um, so I'm just going to mark on the ruler and then I can uh, transfer the markings onto the styrene and cut out some sheets and I'm just trying to find a straight edge there because I'd already cut uh, a strip off so that's why I'm fiddling about with the uh, styrene at the moment now, not my usual super glue that I'm using. I'm using uh, very thin contact cement. Apparently this stuff works a treat with styrene. So I'm just putting it along the edge and then sticking the, uh, the side of the ATST onto its base. And what I found with this glue is just a little uh, drop here and there, although you can see me caking the entire model with uh, glue. It sort of melts the plastic and welds um, the plastic together so like I said this is trial and error and um, so I'm just getting used to this material and also this new glue feeling proud of myself that I'd actually got one side stuck down I then didn't trust myself and thought nope something's gonna happen so I just made some like little braces for inside uh, that you won't see just to hold the sides together um, so when it all gets fitted together nothing's going to crumble and uh, fall apart with both sides stuck together and the top it was now time to add the front bit so I'm just kicking the entire model with uh, the contact cement I'm just going to stick this on there and done. Can't believe that I've just made the body for an ATST. I'm quite proud of myself actually. And because I still don't trust myself, I'm adding even more contact cement. So the proper professionals that use this styrene day in day out, I apologise now. This is my first time doing this and I was just being overly cautious and true to form I was right to be overly cautious because 
And this panel kept wanting to peel away. No idea why. So again, I'm just going in with lots more of this contact cement just to get it to stick. Now what I found using this styrene was you do a little gentle cut, then a second cut, then you feel frisky, do a third cut, and then you can just snap it, which is startling really, and makes the job of uh, nice neat um, lines all that more simpler. Now another thing that I figured out was, if you have some stuff that's sticking out, it is very simple just to do this and just shave it away slowly until you get a perfect line. So again, kind of fallen in love with this uh, styrene um, because it's uh, so simple to use. That is a uh, fidget spinner, um, it's the remnants of one that I used in a couple of videos before so what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, cutting some down to size and they're going to be the um, the holes for either side of the ATST for the weapons to stick out of so I wasn't sure if the plastic would stick so I just roughed up some of the styrene just uh, to give the uh, bond of that plastic a little extra uh, grip Now these are two cake nozzles that I'm just going to cut down to size because I want the back bits. Um, I'm just going to glue them together and that will be the neck that joins the top half of the ATST to the little square bit that I'll be making next. And there is said square bit. So what I'm going to do, just stick the uh, nozzle bits onto that square bit and then stick the ATST on top of that. Job done, then it'll be onto the legs. And because I'm an Ace filmmaker, I forgot to record that part, so you just have to trust me. Um, yeah, uh, it does fit, it did stick, um, but just forgot to press record. Sorry. What I'm doing here is just cutting some strips of styrene um, so that I can just put them on as little panels and uh, two of the panels for the uh, look it, they look like eyes at the front of the ATST. And that's the little square bit of styrene that's going to go on the front and then it's onto the legs. So the legs, the original design was, um, I was going to copy off um, Andy Mecca, uh, but then realised that they were going to be too chunky and the ATST uh, legs are thin and sort of like gangly. So um, I just sort of tried to make something that didn't look too thick. Uh, so it was just basically half a, um, a plastic spoon bent over some of the, um, the stir a bit and then just kept adding bits, bits and pieces of the uh, plastic spoon until I got what would look like a leg. Once I was happy with the uh, shape of the uh, leg, I then just added some, uh, I think these are rivets or something, or like washers um, that you use on your roof and just stuck them on the um, on the joints just to give it a little bit more uh, texture and then drilled a hole through it uh, put a cocktail stick in there and then technically just glued it into the ATST and suddenly it takes shape and I've got to be honest here I had to do a little bit of uh, tomfoolery so one of the legs is further front than the other leg but that was simply so then I could get the uh, ATST to freestand 
um, so it didn't have to uh, be glued onto a base or uh, held up with uh, various uh, cocktail sticks. And then all it was left for to do was just to start adding the detailing which was lots more panelling made from uh, styrene and bits and pieces of uh, thinner styrene. The white bits on there is the really thin styrene that I've used in many builds before. So it just kept adding, it just kept adding, kept adding. Then I had some, uh, I found some solder. So I'm just gonna use that as some piping because it's very easy to bend around corners. Um, so I've just stuck some of that on just to give it a little bit more sort of texture and interesting points to look at. And then I broke out my sweetie box filled with Greeblies. Um, this is just stuff that this is I think this is the third or fourth sort of box I've got and this stuff is from tanks now what I thought with this ATST because it's an all-terrain sort of transporter um, I just um, get some you know like the stuff that you get from that's on the side of tanks which is like looks like bags and tents and stuff like that rolled up I just thought I'd stick some of them on the side just to give it that sort of TBA look and um, maybe it was to cover up some of the gaps that um, might have been showing simply because I hadn't measured everything correctly let's move on and this is the final version of the ATST with all the little bits and greeblies added on um, so I'm just gonna take it away uh, to get primed. And I think it was at this point when I had the light bulb moment of thinking maybe I should just prime it and try and go for what looks like a proper Star Wars vehicle. Now usually I'll go weird and wonderful and do a steampunk Star Wars and stuff like that but I thought no I'm going to keep it simple so it's just grey primer and then I'm just going to weather the uh, entire vehicle and with no paint, absolute no paint, just weathering and just to see what it looks like. So you could probably say this is my laziest paint job ever. And while we do some montage of me weathering this vehicle, I just want to say thank you very much for your continued support. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It's free to, and um, it's going to help the channel. And until next time, keep scratching that build, everybody. Thanks for watching. And also, as a side note, if any of you want to try this build, Will you uh, send me a picture so I can see what how you did and how you bettered me and what uh, what problems you overcome? Just uh, email me. The email link will be in the description. So, what do you reckon of the uh, the paint job, George? Do you like it? I still think you should have used paint. You're very lazy. Uh, whoa, whoa, hang on now. You've become a critic of my uh, of my build suddenly. Well, some people did think I was the Borg, not the Terminator. And you keep talking like that, and I'll assimilate you. Let's move on to the glamour shots. Evil.